hello everyone today's guest of the squeeze growth podcast is nanzio the founder of a time blocking and task management productivity tool called akiflu hey nanzio how is it going man hey drubir great here what about you i am good too and i'm super excited to have this conversation with you so uh, as we begin please tell us something about you and akiflu at a very basic level for someone who wants to know about you what you do and uh, what akiflu is All right. Uh yeah, I'm I'm the CEO and founder of Akiflow. Uh, Akiflow is a productivity app that uh, integrates tasks and calendars and also it's connected to the rest of the workspace so it automatically uh, consolidates tasks and events from multiple platforms. That's pretty cool. So coincidentally, we just recently finished writing the review of our key flow yesterday and yeah it should get published uh, by today or tomorrow at max so it is a pretty in depth review so and while i was using our key flow i got to know how pretty cool it can be as you said about consolidating all the uh, tasks from all over the web and all the other tools that you are using you can you know integrate all of those in our key flow itself and you don't have to go here and there to get your tasks done so that's pretty powerful that's awesome thank you man thank you uh, so yeah uh, about the name so does the name akiflow mean something or was it simply a random name you picked online like post malone yeah <laughs> yeah uh, well actually we started the company with a different name it was called akido and then we couldn't find the domain.com so we had to change it and uh, and so we incorporated the word flow which is you know the flow experience it's uh, it's a powerful concept in productivity and it sounded really good so we're like fine we'll 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 call our self aki flow okay so it was due to the fact that you didn't get the uh, domain that you wanted uh right yeah <laughs> actually right. yeah so uh, could you share what is the biggest problem that aki flow solves for someone who you know wants to try out aki flow who is new to it and what separates it from a uh, let's say typical productivity tool Yeah so uh, generally when people want to be productive they 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 need to do a, a bunch of things constantly like uh, consolidating all their tasks into a single task list uh, figure out how much time they have uh, moving things around as priorities changes and so we realize that to do so considering the workspace being so cluttered with so many different apps uh, it takes a lot of time like you you spend like somebody that wants to be productive has to spend a lot of time reorganizing and working on their own task list and consolidating things so we figured out we could build a doctor that makes organizing yourself much faster by for example automatically consolidating all your tasks visualizing your task next to your calendar that is the best representation of your day and week and uh, and then we have a you are the cool features that make you save uh, a few seconds here and there throughout the day like the notifications that were common bar to capture new tasks and and so on so yeah what we really told is uh we reduce up to like 80% of the amount of time that is needed to organize yourself Uh, as you mentioned about the notification feature in fact it is one of my favorite akiflow features out there because uh unlike other typical notifications that you get from different productivity apps akiflow sends you the notification that you know that is responsive and interactive so let's say i have a meeting in 5 minutes so it will uh, send me a beautiful notification alert saying that you need to join this meeting and there will be a button that will help you instantly join the meeting so yeah it does save a lot of time and as you mentioned that it uh, almost takes away 80% of your time uh, about you know of arranging all the tools here and there so in, uh, instead you guys uh, found that to be a problem and decided to uh, make one tool that does all of that uh, in a single interface so uh, can we say that uh, when you started were you also facing that problem about you know uh, finding the perfect productivity tool that consolidates all your tasks i was definitely a personal problem um, we I, i used to do time blocking on on the calendar on google calendar and the problem of like doing time blocking is that first of all uh, a calendar a google calendar is not made for tasks 
So then yep. you have the problem of having tasks represented as events. They, if you forget about one, you have to move them around. Uh, you may forget about something. You also need to keep a separate task list uh, with all your tasks. Um, and so I was doing time blocking in a very inefficient way. Uh, so Archiflow is basically built around that problem. Also, like we started as a, as a, as a different productivity tool. We were like a command line interface to control your online apps. So I could create a calendar event or a Razana task just from a common line. Um, and we realized that what our users were doing with that tool was basically consolidating information or pushing information inside the calendar. So we were like, all right, we know the problem. We, 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 we realized that also our users had the same problem and we we pivoted into, into this current version of Archiflow. So uh, in what year did you start Archiflow? In 2020, uh, oh. during the pandemic. Okay, so yeah, I was about to come to that. So uh, why start a productivity company, uh, you know, in a super crowded niche? And especially at that time when uh, pandemic is on and, you know, there were people who were terrified to invest in, a tool, software, almost any, everything. It was like inflation and recession at the same time. So people were, you know, uh, pretty uh, terrified to uh, spend their money and they they were pretty conscious about spending their money. So what motivated you to start your company at that point in time and yeah, make it successful too? Yeah, well, first of all, we, we, uh, we really care about this problem. Like productivity is the, uh, is the, it's something we, we, we love. And uh, we feel like there, there, there isn't like a solution that is winning the market yet. And uh, we, we were facing issues with our own productivity. So we're like, we, we love this topic. We know a lot about it. And, uh, and the market is anyway huge. So uh, we really didn't have the problem of like, yes, it's true that the, the market is crowded, but no one is winning yet. And, uh, and I also feel like there's not gonna win, be one single winner. Like, Productivity is very uh, personal and uh, subjective. And some people, like different people, they work in different ways. They have different amount of tasks. They, they, they face different challenges. Um, but we really, we, yeah, we really enjoyed the space and we wanted to have an impact. Also, productivity is, um, it's a very complicated concept. But at the end of the day, uh, being productive means uh, being able to uh, make progress towards your goals. They may be uh, work-related or personal goals. And uh, progress in, towards your goals is like makes people happy and like motivated and push them forward. And that's something we, you know, we really care about and uh, it, it's our mission. So uh, yeah, no matter how crowded the space was, we thought we had really cool insights and we could build uh, a different product that could help millions of people. And so far it's going pretty well. Yeah, 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 it is. And I, I really like the way that when you said, uh, although the market is crowded, no one is winning yet. So that's the really good perspective to look about when it comes to building a company. So uh, you guys found a problem that you really cared about and then you started solving them. Awesome. So Nanzio, would you consider yourself as a technical person or a non-technical person when it comes to, you know, uh, knowing things like programming, coding and stuff? Um, so I, I started my career as a software developer, but I haven't been coding for like 10 years, uh, you know, other than for fun. Um, so I, I'm, I'm the non-technical co-founder. I have a technical co-founder is the CTO, Sebastiano. And um, so, yeah, now I, I actually don't look at the technology part. I, I just look at product and marketing and mainly talking to customers, actually. And uh, but, yeah, I have to say that the experience that I had as a, as a software developer uh, helps me communicate with the tech department a bit better and understanding uh, some of the limits or uh, also help them find some creative solutions sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not a technical co-founder here. 
all right all right so uh, so you do consider and you do agree to that uh, that uh, coming from a software development developer background did help you in some way or the other in building archiflow and in coming up with uh, features and advancements right yeah that definitely definitely like i would recommend anyone to learn a bit of coding understand how how coding works how technology works that i mean that's helpful anyway in uh, in uh, in 2022 yeah. um yeah i have to say that the ability to understand uh, some of the technical uh, concepts behind uh, our product also helps me understand a little bit better you know which are the limits so i have seen many uh, you know founders or many innovators who have especially in uh, countries uh, i'm reading subreddits and forums and i see many people having great ideas about starting a saas product or any kind of tool that solves some kind of problem be it in precision agriculture or a no code code tools that help you you know build apps without coding but the problem is that they have the idea but they do not have the technical aspect of it so uh, is it fine to uh, hire a technical co-founder with you uh, while you also being there but you don't know about uh, the technical aspect so uh, you know how does that go along yeah i mean if you're not a technical person and you want to build something in tech you should definitely have a technical co-founder somebody really really good and with a entrepreneurial attitude um and especially if you want to raise money like it doesn't work to just hire coders and make them work you you need somebody who's like who has a big stake in the company and like has the same vision and is aligned to you that can manage coders right um so yeah if you're non technical and you 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 have a good idea uh, in a software like find a technical co-founder uh, talk to potential customers uh, figure out what they really want and if they're willing to pay for your solution and and give all the insights cut the insights with your technical co-founder and come up with a product um if i have to suggest something to anyone who wants to start uh, any any kind of startup actually is always start from like a pain that you know personally and the more you know about it the more insights you have about the pain uh, the more uh, unfair advantage you have because you you know more than other people in that specific topic you can come up with a with a better solution than than other people um and then yeah as i said it's important to kind of like make sure that people at the same problem and it's not, not just you and uh, and uh, find a technical co-founder and and build the product all right so it's necessary to find the pain and knowing that pain in as much detail as we can can and also knowing the solution uh, besides uh, validating the idea that you know many people or at least a pool of market is facing that problem and not just a few individuals and then uh, yeah starting the company right yeah right, right. ideally if you want to start a startup you got to make sure that the pain is a is a multi billion dollar pain right and uh, and then you also need to be sure that people are willing to pay to solve that problem and yeah, right. uh, and so that that's quite important and especially early days the only thing that i had to do as a as a non technical co-founder was just talk to cast talk to potential customers talk to people in our target figure it out which were, were their pains and stuff i remember that when we decided to change product i spent almost 3 months just talking to customers while uh, and my technical co-founder was helping me when we started to get a sense of what we needed to build he started to uh, build uh, let's say the, the the foundation of the of the of our platform while i kept talking to customers potential customers and figured out you know how to build our features and so on and then all this information were going into a product uh, team and we were wo- working to 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 build a product around all the pains that we kept uh, you know understanding uh, from from a user interviews all right uh, so uh, nanzi you talking about money uh, you started archiflow as a bootstrap company right we did we did it for like a few months i mean it was just me and my co-founder for a few months uh, then we got funded by y combinator in summer 20 uh then after that a few people joined the company and uh, and we raised uh, we raised our seed round uh, early earlier this year uh so how does it feel to you know be able to you know, or have the capability to raise amount of funding so according to the crunch base website you guys were able to raise around 125000 dollar of funding from y combinator so it's it's a big deal for you know bootstrap company who just started a few months ago so uh 
what were the processes that you followed and the lessons were you learned while while raising the money well raising from y combinator wasn't really a, a big process like we had to uh, do our application that took like a good week to just you know get all the information together it's actually a really good exercise for anyone who wants to start a company like their application forces you to think about what you're doing properly um so we got through them uh, through YC, uh, you know, they, they called us for an interview and uh, we were accepted. Um, then after that, um, as I said, we pivoted. So we raised a little, you know, a few, uh, um, a, a little money out after Y Combinator, after the, the batch, uh, the program. And then it took us like another year to, you know, pivoting, changing into this new product. And then we went on the market. The market responded really well investors started to reach out and we raised uh, well in total almost 2 million at the end that's pretty awesome nanjo awesome so uh, for someone starting out as a solo preneur or a two two people company uh, mainly building a software some kind of software would you rather recommend them starting a bootstrap company or uh, you know trying to get uh, funding as soon as possible because i do agree that uh, with all the advantages that funding brings there are also some expectations of the you know venture capitalist or whoever funds the company that you need to fulfill so you might have to you may have to pivot the features of the product as per the requirement or expectations so do you think that expectations changes once you uh, raise a certain amount of money mm, not necessarily like the investors they push uh, for you to grow but that should be your goal as well uh, i mean ideally if you don't need money to start and you can bootstrap you want to do it because um, you get to have your product that uh, your metric uh, better for when you go to fundraising and you can raise at a bigger valuation so you 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 have less dilution for the founders so if you can bootstrap it's a great idea uh, but in case you need like to, to have a product and go to, you know, and get to the market, you need a lot of time and uh, a few people working with you. That's, that's a cost. And uh, if you have a standing, like if you're good enough to raise uh, before you even have like a product ready and some investors, they believe in you, they see your profile, they, you know, they, they, they see something exceptional and they, and they want to invest. Then in that case, that's probably a good idea. Like, uh, Usually, like in a lot of startups, you can actually be, come up with a MVP, go to market, see how the market responds, and then it's going to be much easier to raise, right? But if you're a super cool guy who worked for Facebook, Google, and you did startups before, investors trust you, and you need a big team uh, just to have the MVP, then probably you should raise, I guess. All right. Right. So, uh, Nanzu, you seem to be loving visiting India. And so wh <laughs> what do you think about India's startup culture, especially Bangalore and the talent there? Because uh, you might have heard many people say that Bangalore is the Silicon Valley of India. So, so uh, how are you finding India and specifically Bangalore to be for startup? Yeah, well, I don't really visit India. I've been living here for almost 10 years now. <laughs> so uh, I came to start a software development company and then I decided to stay because of the startup ecosystem. Like uh, at one point we were like the company that we built was like allowed us to work remotely from anywhere and I had to decide where to go. And yeah, I could have go to San Francisco, but I wasn't building startups back then. So San Francisco is quite expensive and India I, I saw Bangalore growing at a ridiculous pace in the last uh, in in the last ten years. Uh, it's very exciting to be here. There's a lot of talent. There's a lot of startup uh, that provide great services. I don't know even to sell up down or <laughs> any uh, any of of the other. Like there's so much stuff happening over here, and there's so much talent that that came to to this city that. First of all, you know, gives you a lot of inspiration. And then and then it's also like a great place if you want to start a startup. If, if you want to hire talent, there's plenty over here. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I mean, we, we're building a staff company that works worldwide and everything. But like, if I wasn't building these, I would probably be looking at the Indian market as, as a market for my for my startup. Because this place is just like, it's just crazy, man. Like, uh, there's so much opportunities over here. 
Uh, I remember the first time I was in India, like the first couple of years as, a, as an entrepreneur, I was building something different. Like I was building a, a software company, but I was, I was so excited to see how many opportunities and how many people were starting new things and growing, at, as I said, like super fast in, in no time. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I actually convinced a few people to, to move over here and start a startup. Nice. So you do believe that uh, Bangalore has a bright uh, future at least in the startup phase, uh, you know, startup phase in the coming year. Yeah, 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 no, no doubt, man. Uh, so, Nanjiu, tell me about uh, the best feature of Archiflow, Archiflow in your opinion. So, what is the best feature that you believe uh, Archiflow provides? Well, uh, as a solution, Archiflow is probably the value is in, in the mix of all the features that we added um, because they help throughout the journey of organizing yourself and planning and work. Uh, the one I love the most, I couldn't do without it is two actually are the integration with gmail and slack so whenever i'm reading my emails or i receive a slack message and i don't have time to work on that right now or like i want a reminder or whatever i just save the slack message or start the email and they get into the into the Aki flow inbox i think that saves me so much time also because once you get those stuff you can with one click you can go back into the original email or the slack message if you want to reply and i think that saves hours oh i i do agree to that on you because uh, i i have myself used uh, you know, some of the integration features that Archiflow provides, especially the one where you can uh, also integrate tools like Zapier and IFTTT that then allows you to create different automation. So that's pretty powerful. Yeah. If you think okay. about that. Uh, so uh, how do you stay productive every day uh, and how do you incorporate Archiflow in, into your day-to-day -day routine? So what, what does your day-to-day, -day, you know, morning routine looks like a day in the life of Nunzio Martinello? All right. Um, so what I do is uh, I wake up not too early, like around 7.30, I go to the gym. Uh, I, I don't really, I mean, I don't open the computer till then, but like maybe I start some email and I make sure I, I get to inbox zero on the way to the gym. Um, then after I'm done with that, I come home, I have my breakfast and I start to work. Uh, I usually work nonstop till 7, 8 p.m. Uh, luckily, there's I, I have some help with the, with the cooking and everything. Um, and, uh, well, I just look at Akiflow throughout the day. Like, it really helps me to do time blocking because, and I usually do it the day before, the day before I, I, I plan my day my next day and uh, so when I sit at my desk of course there's some adjustment that I need to make because maybe I got an important email or like something urgent to do but I just look at my key flow and I don't have I do, even don't have to think about which stuff from my task list I have to do everything is in my calendar that you know already a timeline so I just sit and start I put my headset on I put the music and uh, and I just go through my my day and and so when do you sleep uh, at the most average level so I, I I yeah I can be better at this like, uh, well, ideally, I try to wind up the day around like, you know, 11, 1130. I, I approach the bed. Uh, that doesn't happen all the time. But like that, I have I have a fit me notification. Um, but yeah, I'll, I, if, if possible, I'll try to have at least seven hours of sleep. All right. So also, Nancy, also, do you like reading books? I do. I do. I have a, I have a Kindle next to the bed. Uh, yeah. It also like I, I try to not bring my phone to bed or like at least not look at the phone for like an hour before sleep. And um, yeah, I I read usually I read. Awesome. Uh, so what would be your you know advice to new founders who are looking to start a software company uh, just like you did? So what would be your advice and the mistakes that, that they can, you know, make and then avoid because it, it's pos it's not possible to, you know, avoid all the mistakes. So what would be your advice for new founders? Yeah, focus on understanding the problem and making sure that the market for a solution to that problem. Uh, I think, yeah, I wouldn't rush into building. I would rush into understanding the problem as much as I can and then build a really like a minimum solution that can be sold already. Uh, so ideally... You want to have paying customers from day one or as soon as possible. I know a lot of people are a bit uncomfortable. They're like, okay, the solution is not ready, very early beta and so on. But like somebody paying the ultimate validation that you're doing something that people are willing to pay. For. And uh, yeah. so, yes, I will look. I will look at it this way, like spend a lot of time talking to people, talking to potential customers, make sure you really understand the problem. And, and then at that point, build a solution and sell it. 
Like, don't really give it for free. Try to sell it. If people are willing, if people have a, have a problem, figure it out who are the people with the, that feel the problem the most. And they're, and if they're willing to pay for a, like a very early, terrible product, then you know you're... All right. So uh, you, uh, earlier in this conversation, you said that, you know, uh, when you started Archiflow, you reached out to the potential customers or prospects that you could think could become your potential customers. So... Uh, does that still work like you know directly uh, sending them a cold email so what is the best way to find out the initial customers and reaching out to them to sell your minimum viable product yeah i mean i i started with my network and uh, and i i think everybody can do the same way like in most most of the time like if you know the pain you probably also have contacts around you know people that are experiencing that pain if you don't um you know just reach out on linkedin or twitter people are you know you'll be surprised but a lot of people are willing to help and uh, yeah just you know Anything you can try to get your target's attention, you can do. Uh, but I think that's not really that complicated, getting, sitting with people. But like then you need to learn how to get information out, like how to structure uh, a user interview. Uh, you got to be, you got to learn how, like, yeah, how to get good information, not biased information, how to, you know, how to ask for, for, for stuff uh, and uh, and go deep into into the pain and how big it is, uh, what's, what's the economic opportunity and uh, how people are already solving their problem. A, a lot of the time when there's a problem, there's people like, you know, came up with some hack or like a non-ideal solution to that problem. You want to understand all of that because it will definitely help you build uh, a good solution. All right. So customers can be, you know, one of the most important factors that gives you the ideas to the problem that you can solve. So listening yeah. to them can can be helpful and taking non-biased information. Right. Yeah, but that's right. that that's valid at any stage. Of, we we're, we're still talking to customers all the time. We have a community where people give us feedback. We get on calls all every week with uh, tens of customers. And uh, we survey them, we, we talk to new people, we talk to everybody who left, uh, like we try to get as many information as possible, you know, like quality data, especially when you start, like you really have quantitative data that can really help, like your numbers are too little to, you know, too small to, uh, to get some, you know, valid study. Uh, but talking to people gives you like a ridiculous amount of insights that you will, you can't get from a survey from looking at how they use the product or or from you know whatever other other way so yeah that that's really at any 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 stage of a company talking to customers should be the priority yeah, right and and you're very true when you say that you know talking to your potential customers is an ongoing process so it does it does not end you keep up with a new features uh, as frequently as you know your customers uh, bring in the complaints or the few improvements that they need out of your product so nanjio tell me about something about employee motivation so you might have heard that uh, no one is a as motivated to run a company than a founder so if we talk about steve jobs when he started apple he, he was uh, super pumped up and excited to you know uh, build apple products in his garage but the people that he hired were not even bothered. I mean, they were just out there to make money. He was the one who has the vision to build Apple uh, to what it is today. So similarly, you might have some vision for Aki Flow that, you know, your employees or the people who work for you might not have. So how do you ensure that they stay motivated? How, how do you align your vision? Well, I think most of the job is done for you hire people. Like we try to hire people that uh, they share the same values that we have. They care about the problem that we're trying to solve and they're excited to work in this kind of you know they are excited to build that flow and are excited to work in this kind of environment um so and, and that, that really does most of the job um but then of course like on a weekly basis um we we try to share as much as possible with them what's what's our, which are our goals what's the vision uh why are we doing certain things what are we trying like we try to keep everybody really involved where we're going and what we're doing and uh uh, and they also have a saying like they're actually involved that we're not just communicating to that they can they can be part of it so we're all building a flow together and i think this makes this helps keeping everybody on the same page uh yeah yeah i'd say so about hiring process uh how how hard or easy do you think is hiring the right person for the job because you might have seen or experienced that while hiring someone he or she may uh, pretend uh, even though 
uh, he or she might not be the perfect fit for the role but uh, they can be gr- good at pretending that they can do the job and once they join the company and sign the contract they turned out to be something totally different than what you expected so h- how do you spot those fakers from the ones who are you know really genuine is there any process or method that you follow while hiring someone um when possible we try to have everyone uh, you know we try to have everyone taking the test um so uh, like a real one not like some online test or stuff like we we'll, we'll try to have them work with us for maybe a week or two and uh, we pay them for that time and we tell them that at the end of those two weeks we'll decide if we want to you know actually uh, sign the contract with them or not uh, it's not always possible uh, and uh, so the other part were like we have very strict a uh, few weeks uh, goals and things that we want to validate for new people joining the company and we make sure we look really closely to those goals and like if they don't uh, hit the goals if they don't match our ex- expectations uh, we let them but luckily it's not happening that of it up so twice right. and uh, and and also like you know and actually i think that once was for a technical uh, you know for a skill set problem and uh, the other time was simply like not alignment with you know there was no alignment with our uh, culture which is something we deeply care about like you don't want somebody in, in your company especially if it just like 10 people company uh, you want everybody on the same page with the same attitude and the same mood and yeah right, right. You, you don't want, you don't want a problem early on so yeah the person whom you are hiring you look that they possess the Uh, skills that you uh, guys are looking for as well as the vision that you uh, want them to have for the company uh, my another question is that while i was going through your website i found out your blog section and i found it to be you know it was pretty good and i saw you writing some of the articles yourself so uh, do you consider yourself a writer so do, do you like writing or you just uh, wrote them uh, for you know information sharing or for knowledge sharing yeah i don't think writing is my 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 best skill um no there were like some insights and some tricks about productivity that i really wanted to share uh you know i've been struggling with my productivity in the first place and i found like and i studied it so much that uh, i i also found creative solutions or you know i have cool insights to share i like to do that and the um, but yeah on, on our blog there's also like other people from the company writing and uh, some yeah some some of the information or just like common knowledge that we try to uh, to share giving giving like some different point of view or insights or how can you use that knowledge inside akiflow uh but yeah i like i like sharing what we learned and i think it's also extremely important to uh to educate our users productivity is a very as i said it's a very complicated matter it involves how you pr- prioritize how you plan uh, how you capture your task how you sleep how you eat how you exercise uh, what kind of goals you set to yourself you know there's so much to know about in order to feel that you have everything under control that yeah i think yeah educating like also people to what productivity is and how you can be more productive how you can you should look at it it's uh, it's also part of our you know mission right and 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 you mentioned that uh, there are other writers who write in the blog of akiflow so uh, is that benefiting you besides sharing information uh, truly valuable information is that uh, you know benefiting you get organic traffic from search engine or getting you know customers by ranking uh, for different keywords by writing those articles yeah definitely yeah it's also like kind of one of the main goals of writing uh, writing in our blog and uh, uh, we saw some of our content like ranking pretty well on google uh, there were original content uh, maybe different points of views from whatever was online already so yeah definitely we get we get customers from from seo you know from the search engine yeah, right right that's that's pretty cool so uh, nanzu my last question for you is that uh, what is akiflow going to look like in the next 2 years or maybe in the next 5 years um that's uh, that's uh, complicated to say uh, as as i said before like we listen to our customers a lot so we we already found ourselves a few times you know adjust in the direction according to what we're learning and we'll keep learning so but uh, what we want akiflow to be in a, in a few years is like a software that is able to uh, make make it you know uh extremely easy for people to organize themselves and also uh connect people from a you know uh, and improve also the way people work with each other so the way m- making other people more 
um, uh, more mindful about your time and your schedule and uh, simplify and facilitate a lot of small interactions that right now they happen in, uh, I don't know, on email or Slack or uh, other platforms that requires people to waste a lot of time in order to turn those interactions into um, action items or tasks and uh, and then and also simply you know facilitate how people communicate around uh, items. Um, so yeah we think Akiflow will be a, a necessary tool for a lot of people in order to work really fast and be productive and make the best out of their day yeah yeah can't wait to you know uh, see the more amazing features that you guys guys come up with in Akiflow especially the most of us are waiting for the web app yeah yeah that, I, I'm, I'm testing it right now actually we we have it ready we're just like we're gonna release it in a couple of right right but uh, awesome nanzio it was great talking to you and thank you for you know sparing sparing some time out of your busy schedule to talk uh, thank to you us. so much it was uh, it was a pleasure to talk with you yeah I, I hope to talk to you again and all the best for building an amazing software that you guys are constantly working towards thank you so much same to you